Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you as part of the show today, whether you're live with us or whether you are in replay. Well, as always, I'm excited because I live for these conversations. And today on the show, I've got Daniel Kaya Fusen. He's an author, he's a channeler, and he's a psychic reading. And I think he's going to give us a little taste of his gifts today. And he's got a beautiful book out that you can get on Amazon, the Chakra Keys. And I always like, because you guys know I do books. So anytime I see somebody who goes that deep, because I know what color costs and takes <laughs> in a book, I'm always super excited and how beautifully these keys are shown. And that's just a little something, something about this great book. This show has won several awards and I thank all of you for helping and supporting Three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards, Welp Magazine named it the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and also won the COVR Award for Best Radio Podcast Show. Memberships are available on YouTube. Join us there at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. I'm going to just cover some of the news quickly so we can get on to beautiful Daniel. So besides membership on YouTube, I want to thank Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for doing their help and contributing to this show by sponsoring it. They do energy work. If you'd like to find out more about the work they do, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach. I also take your book to guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I'm a publicist specifically for spiritual messengers. So I help you get booked on radio and podcast. For those of you who are very into the galactic, I have a special gift for you. Most people really want to know their galactic lineage. Where did I come from? What's my mission? What are my strengths, my weaknesses? And I've got a report and a video that goes super deep into almost 20 different star seeds. So you can start to learn your origins. I know when I learned this information, it changed my life. So here's the free gift that you can download today. It is at debbie-inger.com slash starseed. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash starseed. Enjoy this mind-blowing information. I also have a new shamanic class opening. The last one was so successful. Folks from all around the world had joined and are still sending me testimonies about how their careers have changed, their lives have changed, the way they be every day has changed. And really, I live for this. I feel like this is a big part of why I'm here is to disseminate this shamanic ancient tradition that is very healing for humanity and the earth right now. So my new program opening up soon is the Animal Spirit Medicine Program, where you can learn about the wisdom that animals bring. And they do have a lot of incredible wisdom. Uh, they're not pets. They are star seeds who came here, uh, intelligent, sensitive, and all of that with their own missions. Learn how you can start to work with these animal allies to change your world. It is a profound journey in the sacred, mystical world of animal beings. You can go to debbie-dashinger.com slash shaman, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash shaman. And finally, there are a few cabins left. It is selling out. So if you need, I keep hearing from these, from people saying, I need a vacation. Come, have a vacation. I am speaking aboard the Celebrity Cruise in the Galactic Origins vacation. We're going to the Yucatan, seven days at sea, three excursions, Tulum, Cozumel, Belize, Honduras, I can't wait. We're doing a sacred fire ceremony with a grandmother by a sacred pyramid. Um, our excursions alone are worth the price. But this Galactic Origins, we have tons of presenters who are presenting 
And it's going to be so powerful. It's people I can't even wait to hear. Plus, we're going to go through the Bermuda Triangle, which I think is spooky and exciting, the first day. And uh, we're doing, on the 21st of December, we are having a solstice meditation on the top of the ship to bring in the new year in the best possible way. And our final day, when we disembark, we are all going to Kennedy Space Center in Florida because we're going to be astronaut for a day. I have heard that this is phenomenal experience. So there's something for everybody. Bring your kids, bring your lover, bring your friends, bring your neighbor, your family. We'd love to have you also on my website. So simple, right? debbie-inger.com slash cruise. D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash cruise. I can't wait to meet you. I have had people even on YouTube write to me, I'm signing up because of you. It's like, I can't wait to meet you. Fantastic. We will have fun. We really will have fun. Ah, so we're going to shift to our show today. And it's always a great show for me. It really is one of my favorite places to be. Today is no different. My guest, Daniel Kaya Fusen. He's a psychic medium, holistic healer, and spiritual teacher with over 14 years of experience communicating with Thoth, Hermes, same, and other divine guides, including Michael, Shiva, Mary Magdalene, and Gaia, my favorite. Guided by Thoth, and it's funny, Thoth or Thoth, <laughs> Daniel's spiritual practice focuses on activating the 12 chakras within the body and employs a harmonic approach called the key ring cycle, which balances energy flow across the chakras. Through his wildflower fire community, Daniel offers a space for sharing insights on deep energetic transformation. In collaboration with Ascended Masters, Daniel teaches the sacred knowledge of elemental spiritual fire, providing transformational medicine for both humanity and the planet. Daniel offers private sessions, weekly classes, and semester-long courses. He's also the author of The Chakra Keys, The Holistic Art of Wildflower Fire. And Daniel shares his wisdom through a popular YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about him, go to wildflowerfire.com. And with that, I bring the wonderful Daniel to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Thoth or Thoth? Um, you know, to be honest, he guides me through pronouncing it Toth, but Toth is the most common and he never seems to take offense. Thank you. Because I appear to say it different every time. <laughs> the and most then common. someone will correct me the other way. It's not yeah. Toth, it's Thoth. It's not Thoth. It's that. I'm like, oh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I think right from the beginning, people have to be present. Like if, if you're, pr if you're present with him, mm -hmm. He honors the care with which we reach out more than perfect pronunciations. I love that. I love that, you know, and I understand that, Daniel, from the point of view that I have a real relationship with Gaia. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do my morning practice thinking that would be a result. It was never my intention. My intention was to do a morning shamanic practice. And by virtue of that, I have a real, as though she's here, uh, relationship. And so I understand what you're saying, but I've never had one with Thoth. Can you explain what I and anybody who's listening can do to create a real relationship? Because he's such an advanced and benevolent spirit. Well, this pattern, the key ring, is a harmonic relationship between 12 chakras. It's an Atlantean chakra system mm -hmm. that is also ready for us now. In fact, we really need it. Yeah. Now, this is in relationship to shifting energies in the world. So when you're not confronted with as many energies, it's actually better to stick simple. Um, the... I typically have, yes, 
the example of a flute, you know, or a child's recorder. This is an instrument that plays seven notes. It's like the seven chakra, seven chakra system that most people are accustomed to. It works beautifully and it's perfect for many situations. But the world is awakening in a lot of ways, meaning literal energies are flowing that didn't used to be moving around us. And so these 12 chakras help us bring this wild flowing spirit into coherence. The key ring is a harmonic way to make the light of the energies work together. So in music, this is called the circle of fifths. It's a very common pattern. It's an elegant and excellent way to learn music. So it's one of the first things I believe most musicians should learn. And music is sound waves. Light, sound, you can just make an analogy. They're much longer frequencies with sound, but the tight little white light waves can be direct ratios. Same patterns, same dynamics. So we're basically making music out of light and the first thing you need to do is tune. So the key ring tunes your instrument and puts you in a position to hear him. Mm. And these system of 12 energies that were taught to you by Toth and therefore why you wrote this beautiful book, how did it come about? How did, how did you connect and how did Toth start to disseminate this particular information for you, part of your mission to share with the world? Well, there's a long version and a much shorter version. So if anyone's interested, I have videos on my website that explain at length. But when I was in my late twenties, I got involved in a dance community in New York City led by Gabrielle Roth, who some, oh, of, yes. some people might know. It was changed my life almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. And people in the community were very enthralled with these books called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, written by Dronvalo Melchizedek. And they were channeled from Toth. Totally took me beyond limits of understanding I'd ever had before. I was deeply skeptical for years. And I would periodically get rid of them because I'm like, ah, this is no way. You know, this is ridiculous. Talking about Atlantis and all these details and nah. And I just kept coming back again and again. And after the fourth time being present with the books, I was utterly obsessed with four pages, just four pages in the second volume that introduced this system, this exact system that I'm using, 12 of them. And I just, I just poured over it. There's only four pages, but I would meditate on it. I would be present with it, reaching kind of beyond the words. And at a certain point, it I cracked. Like it was just, I cracked open. And all my energy left my body and I couldn't feel a thing. And at that time, I was very used to feeling the seven chakras. It was normal. I would reach for my heart. I would breathe whenever I felt my heart or my gut change. I would change my situation or choices in life. Not feeling my spirit was horrifying. And I went on a walk. I was teaching and giving sessions in Berkeley. Um, this is, gosh, 16 years ago. And slowly, very slowly, I began to feel energy above and below me. And at two points, one light and one dark. Later, I learned that people call this the soul star chakra and the earth star chakra. I didn't know that at the time. I just felt it. And it was so interested that I came out of my terror a little. I'm like, I'm feeling outside my body, but I can't feel my body. And it was like really bizarre. And slowly, as I focused on these two points, I felt a line connecting them straight, totally straight. And that was me. I'm just this little odd barbell walking around Berkeley, just like, Whoa. and gradually, as I just breathed and walked, I began to reconceive myself and I could feel the 12. And it, distinct, there they were. There was a little bit of an experience of the ones I'd known ripping apart in several instances. And then it was just right there. And I could shift my attention from one to the other. For the next several months, I was off the hook. I would just look at people. I could read them. Look at people. I knew what was going on. And it was kind of terrifying. It was too much. I didn't have boundaries. It was exciting. 55% more exciting than terrifying. But it was a really difficult period of time just coming to terms with it. And after several months, 
I had a dream. And in the dream, Toth appeared to me. He was blue and bald and kind. And he told me to use the circle of fifths, starting with the heart. So when you progress linearly, it's a, it's a bit of an experience like a funhouse mirror. You know, things get bent really easily. And it's sort of like if anyone is, an, is a musician, if you try to tune the guitar one note to another, but you don't use a, an objective standard like a tuner, you might, every two notes might sound okay, but by the end, they're not really in tune. It's hard to be perfect. But when you do the key ring, you're going harmonically between the notes and you end up very consistently in tune. So just super quick, and I have lots of videos on my, on my channel, Chakras in the Key Ring at the top of my channel has the videos that do this at length. But it's the heart and the crown and the throat and the sacral, nose tip, solar plexus, diamond eye, lungs, root, chin, navel, third eye, heart. I do this daily, several times a day. I wake up, I do it. I have been doing it for 16 years. The way in which this gives us insight, information, inspiration, it just it just keeps going. It just keeps giving. It's I'm utterly enthralled with it. It's so joyful to experience. And it also really helps us take on our own spiritual life by ourselves. So by yourself, you can go that, through that system and tune in and it shows you like what's weird. What's going on? Why is that happening? And you learn to talk to each chakra in a way that it'll, it'll let you know very clearly, work on this. Of all the things that you feel and think about and are worried about in your life, do this first. Your spirit is telling you, prioritize in this order. And once you resolve that imbalance, it reveals the next one. But it really helps weave through the confusion. And at the end of the day, if you address the biggest, most obvious dissonance for a while, Toth is patient, but we're talking for a while. You do that, he starts to come through, and there's nothing comparable. I mean, it's just hang, hanging out with him is, is for a long time, was my only purpose in life. Mm. Wow. Yes, I was very surprised in reading your book. Um, I am aware of the chakras, and shamanically, I do chakra work, and then going, oh, nose tip chin these these are really interesting points for me and so you do channeling you do mediumship psychic and there's some pretty magnificent characters that come through you was it thoth first who came through and then the others started to come through after well i mean i could go on at, at length but the simple version is for about five to six years, I kind of made a real leap of consciousness and blew myself open and I could hear everybody. So anybody I focused on, I was talking to. And when I, when this story happened that I just told you, it was the end of that period. And he brought me into coherence. He brought me into discipline. So I, be, I became the the, the act of focusing on him and doing this work to retune brought me a level of sanity I had not had before because I had too many thoughts, too much consciousness in me. As soon as I thought about something, I was there with my energy and I, I was just too open for years, for years. And so this brought me back in a way that I was just like everything weird that I heard, I would be like, Doth, what do you think? <laughs> and it's He encouraged it. He really encouraged it. And it because my effort to bring my consciousness back and retune to him was, was the work that he asked of me. And after that, he was perfectly willing to be like, well, da 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 da. Did you see this about what they were telling you? Maybe you should question that next time. I know they're really intense. I know they're shiny, but don't necessarily go off the deep end with them because they're not really honoring your life. They're not paying attention to whether you're strung out. That kind of guidance. Yeah, that's huge. Um, yeah. How very powerful to be able to be guided by an ally like that. I think I think that's so important, and it's a game changer, especially to be alive today on this very dense, intense planet and body <laughs> and all that. Yes. So, yeah, it's beautiful you have that, and it's also beautiful that you share that with other people through your work. I know, uh, Daniel, in your book, The 12 Keys, 
it emphasizes this expanded energetic awareness and that that you say helps to navigate confusing and painful emotions. Some people might want to hear about that, maybe experiencing that. Do you have a specific example um, that you can give or an exercise from the book that listeners can use to start to sharpen their intuition and then better understand that or navigate experiences like that? Certainly. Um, and, you know, I, I tuned in and I did a practice and asked him, you know, what's most important for me to share today? And he's just the key ring, teach them about it. So the, the exercise is to go through this pattern. You can do it in one breath per chakra. You can do it in any, you know, extended value. I only go up to an hour. I will do practices where I spend about five minutes on each chakra as well. And when you're going through in this way, what you're doing is you're paying attention to how does each one feel and can you change what you're feeling? So the immediate, the snapshot of what happens when you tune into the chakra right away is very revealing, but also does it shift? Weird, dissonant, confusing sensations that don't shift are revealing. It's not bad, but it means you might want to work on that. And so the guidance he offers is create a rhythm where you're doing a long version of this half an hour, at least once a week, and then pay attention what stands out the most and work on that for the week. Just every, every other day, several times a day, just make it a priority. And what we're looking at is you can sense energy that is your emotion. Energy, emotion, thoughts, are all, they're all the same thing. They're different dimensions of the same thing. So every thought exists and has a resonance. When we focus and emphasize and practice the discipline of tuning into the resonance, it gives us kind of unique access to trapped emotions. So if I'm feeling an intense sensation in one shoulder or the other, and it's out of balance, like it's more on one side than the other, it's like, wait a second, my lung chakra has something to tell me. And I won't necessarily learn right away, but over the course of the week, I can just make a commitment. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to breathe. And I'm just going to watch my mind. What comes up? And this can, goodness, it can unravel deep, repressed feelings that you've carried since you know, decades. Like if we don't deal with our baggage, we'll die with it. And plenty of people, they go, they go to near the end of their life. And the reason they're getting car cancer and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's is because they did not deal with their baggage. So when we do this on purpose, we're preempting all sorts of, at, the, at best, discomfort. But really, these are the debilitating forces that are dragging, off, dragging us off our game. You know, they're, they're ruining our ability to focus and create intentional decisions in life. And you can get into them. You, you look, you focus, it shows you what it is, and you have to go back a little, grieve for someone that you never really said goodbye to stare at an old dream that you didn't ever really resolve that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So these past wounds, this emotional baggage you're talking about, I, I've never heard it said like that. That was really amazing. Like if you don't deal with it, you die with it. And uh, I, I know it's a great motivator for me because every time <laughs> I think about some of the things I've lived with in my life that my soul set up, but still I think, you know, I don't need to repeat this. I've worked really hard on this and I'm complete. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving on here. So if people feel like I'm inhibited, my ability to feel, to respond to my spirit, um, so you're teaching one thing, which is physically, let's say you can feel something go, okay, there's definitely a blockage here. How can I create a more fluid connection? Let me breathe into it. Let me see what's there. What else can they do? What if there isn't um, some kind of physical symptom? How else would they check in to know where to start working? Well, so what I do the best I can to articulate in the book is it's really valuable to approach your from mind, body, and spirit. They're all interrelated. So what you do is you work with one approach. I typically start with spiritual awareness by going through this meditation. But then as soon as you recognize anything that grabs your attention, anything out of the ordinary, 
you can sit with it, breathe with it. And this is one of the most important simple tools to develop. You learn to breathe with the resonance you're feeling, which means you change your rhythm and you change your depth. That work, and it takes practice, but that work to learn how to, to shift your rhythm is going to bring the emotion or the thoughts to the surface. And the thing to care about here is, as you mentioned, it can be normal, tempting, even valuable to say, I'm not going to dwell on this. I've got to put it down, right? But the reality is some things don't disappear. They're karma. They're right. They're not going to go away just because we out try to out positive it, you know? And so if you learn to breathe in rhythm with it, it'll bring it back into consciousness. And there'll, there'll be thresholds, you know, at a certain point, you might want to be like, I got to chill out. <laughs> I got to chill out. And then that would be the time to go to the body. And so a, a big part of what I teach in the courses is yogic routines in tune with this system that'll be like, look, when I'm focusing on in this feeling, I'm remembering my ex and how devastating it is. I just can't do this shit anymore. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to bring it into the body. We're going to bring a new energy. We're going to intentionally presence positive strength and empowerment in the same area, in the same chakra on pur purpose, using exercises that help do that. And that'll help flush the energy. So you can stop addressing it with your mind. You know, the challenge is often getting too stuck in your mind with stuff. You don't have to do it all with your head, with your thought process. So then we use the body, get stronger, which is always a nice fridge benefit, but actively learn to flush out these feelings so we don't bear them and carry them. That is so interesting. Um, so I have two questions that just popped up. So the first one I'm going to ask, because I did show earlier, I mean, I really do love the artwork in this book. And I know, were you the artist? No, um, Amanda Moore. She was yeah, I didn't go early, to the front. Sorry. early client student collaborator. She believed in me when far fewer people did. So that that's very valuable in its own right. And she was inspired on her own to make these images mm. for the shoppers. I love this one. This one should be a painting for a wall, the heart. They, they are. <laughs> I have them. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. I bet they carry energy. I mean, love the goddess. Come on. These are so stunning. That's for the navel. This is for the sacral. So I'm showing people because I want them to understand that the book concludes with art and with overviews for every one of the chakras. So how for you does the integration of these visual elements and the chakra themes enhance anyone reading this, their understanding and their experience of the energy centers? So a lot of this, I'm just going to find five different ways to say the same thing in a sense, but we can change our chakras through the mind, through the body, or through the spirit. Now, there's more nuances than that, but it's really valuable to just engage the, uh, the practice through those three approaches. So when you sit and meditate and visualize, you tune into the chakra by tuning into the surface of the body. So the book describes this, but this is where it's easiest to first feel a chakra's energy. So you're not actually feeling the chakra. This ends up being important. You're feeling the ray of light that emerges from within your body at the surface of your body. That matters. So you meditate, you tune into that point, and then you it's sort of like rubbing your belly and patting your head. You're learning to keep that going and then bring in a visualization. So one of the first ways we begin is try working with these images, these, these, this artwork which was a collaboration between us. I described images I wanted to try to portray. She gave her version. We went back and forth. And that can give you a deeper relationship to the chakra. And then the, the there are multiple lists of different characteristics and traits, dysfunctions, superpowers for each chakra. And you can intentionally presence any of those thoughts. Meditate while you feel the chakra and the chakra will start waking up stretching and showing you what you're ready to see about your life in that area. Okay. Super beautiful. I would love if you would take us through an experience. So I'm going to just volley myself out there. All right. I did. I had a session with you. I had a private session with you, Daniel, and it was so beautiful and apropos. I love when you get exactly what you need in the moment. And I heard everything I needed to hear, very affirming. And you said something, I still remember that you said, you know, 
uh, essentially, you're doing too much. Like, you need to quiet this vehicle down, quiet this <laughs> this uh, beautiful space here down with how much is going on for you. And thousand percent accurate. I know it. I live with it. And yet, here's the setup. I, even since I spoke to you and had that session, it is still not only where it was, it's gone exponential. I have had, and it's like, as people with our want to do will say, ha ha, it's such a good pro problem to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I have a million opportunities. And with each of these opportunities comes this much work in order to accomplish them or show up for them. So yeah, on some level, I'm graced, I'm humbled, but on another human level, I'm exhausted and trying to keep up. So that particular situation has not gone away. I mm. definitely feel it here. Um, I got an invitation to go back to a TV show yesterday and with the joy came right here, all this, mm. because you know the talent guy reaches out to me and says, oh, we're gonna do an hour session on the phone and you're gonna send me this. And I'm like, oh my God, please not now, please no more. That's yeah. how I feel. Yes, more to opportunities, but the work, please no more. So there's so many ways we could go with this. First of all, you already, you already did the work. You told me where you felt it. When it's the back of your body, that means you are not yet conscious of the thoughts that will explain what this is doing to you. Mm -hmm. But you do know that it's a burden in such a way that generates that tension. This is much more information than you might think it is. Imagine you're playing playing in an orchestra. Mm -hmm. Someone comes into the room and they start start playing a different song. Mm -hmm. Like we're not judging that that other song is bad. Yeah. We're saying you're playing a song that's out of harmony with the rest of the music in this room. Mm -hmm. I get that. Okay. Now we're talking about your body. Yeah. And so what we're doing at the end of the day is we're saying, we want really high standards for you, Debbie. You have so many opportunities. You're going to have to not make them compete. You're, you're basically saying, which of you are willing to play well with others? Mm -hmm. Which of you opportunities wow. are willing to harmonize and thus enhance each other? And the ones that aren't, you're not making them bad. You're just saying, look, you don't have the right to drag me out of what's working in all these other ways. It's not gonna, That's not going to function for me. And mm -hmm. when your mind has already told you, please, no more, no more, mm -hmm. you got to say no to that. Wow. That's so interesting. I just want to, like, as an aside, as you read my mind a little bit, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I got invited recently to a bunch of summits to be interviewed on. Mm -hmm. And I stopped doing summits along. There's probably three people in the world I do because they're money making and you actually meet people and you can start working with people you meet that you um, are sharing with in the audience. That makes sense. That's an ROI. But in general, I've let summits go. And I made an ex an exception because I saw the other names who had showed up for this summit and because some of them are my, are my friends. And so I said, I'll do it. And it's actually a two-parter. I did the second part this morning, the second part of being interviewed with the live audience out there. And there was a part of me that was like, hmm, we're going to sit back and see what happens. Like, because typically with summits, the only person who wins is the host. The host gets a <laughs> slew of new e emails and names, and that's why they do all this work. The participants, mm. not so much. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking to something that I had already had an intuitive hit around, but I still have donated my time. I've still sent out all the newsletters and the social media blasts. And yeah, so I know already, like that is a huge one that, I can't anymore. Yeah. And for the other in, I mean, I'm just sorry. I'm processing in the moment. Not at all. No, this is the work. It's the work. Like this other, yeah. I appreciate it to slow down enough, like to stop the roller coaster and just go, okay, this mm -hmm. is what's happening. And like I got, you know, I'm still getting invitations to be interviewed on shows. I'm not even pitching myself. And I realize 
you can do it. You can do it, but you need to push it way out. Like mm -hmm. make it in November, <laughs> make it in December, make it like a long way away. So all of what's happening, it's in line, it's in place. You've caught a breath. Mm. Yeah. Well, so I, am aware. I would even oh, just food for thought Yeah. to, to say right away, like pe people, ideas, opportunities, show you what they are immediately in spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you learn to tune into the spirit, not the idea, but yeah. the spirit itself. So your mind is going to go, wow, this is a cool person. Wow, this has money. Wow, this is what I want. And yet your spirit is telling a different story because it's just registering dissonant at first. Is this in harmony or is it dissonant? Now, you might not immediately know why it's dissonant. That's mm -hmm. the value of learning to tune in and do the shift in breathing and then compare. But spirit's going to tell you right away there's something off. And if you train yourself, practice valuing that right away, you can make much quicker decisions, which is what you need because you have so much stuff coming at you. So you can't afford to just put it off. You know, you have to be able to say sometimes, look, they're singing a different song. I'm not judging them, but that's not a song that's going to work with what is most valuable to me. I'm a, I'm a musician. I sing. So I understand harmony. There you go. <laughs> I think it's my first language. So it's very interesting what you're saying, because uh, it probably is there already. And I'm just acting like it's separate, but to allow my intuition, if you will, I think it's deeper than that, but my intuition and this musical sense, which has been a lifelong guide for me to come together, to work together, to yeah. navigate all of this. And this is, you know, for perspective, I gave everything to learn to follow my connection to Toth. Decades. I mean, I, I left mainstream life at 25 with all sorts of opportunities. And this is what I followed. Mm -hmm. And this system and the way I'm conversing with you to apply it, this is what he says is the most important thing I have to give. Oh my goodness. Well, lucky us. I hope people are getting a lot out of that very transparent process and seeing yourself, maybe you relate or maybe there's something else, but you're starting to identify for yourself what it is and how you could use it. And we, you've got over 14 years of experience of allowing these channeled energies to come through you, would you do something right now for us? And if you are willing, mm -hmm. just let me know, do you prefer I ask you a question or would you like to tap into Toth and allow his, her energy to, I don't know, bless us? I, I, so I could laugh. Uh, the, the beauty of how it works is like, I can hold the thought. I sense the vibe of the thought. And does it harmonize with him or not? You are welcome to ask. He's going to end up bending it in the direction he wants to. I love that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, well, what one thing, Daniel, that I really love that you do and that Toth has done through you that you said that deeply resonates is this work is to heal humanity and heal the earth. My God, I stand for that. And I would like to know, what do we need to know? What are we missing in our busy, preoccupied, anxious, consumerism, et cetera, life and disconnected at some level? What can Toth, tell us and guide us to something we don't know that might be surprising to learn that would really help right now. Consider you were invited here to contemplate from the perspective 
of a choice to be here, followed by a series of incarnations that is of varying lengths for different people. Cease measuring your reality from within your reality. To trust that you were once not here and will one day leave is to gain the perspective that used to be yours from within your soul. We wrote this story for you. We gave multiple opportunities to leave, to change, and yet you were repeatedly guided more by your own karma than by your desires. Your karma is a burden until you learn to change it. And the many pains of this world are not designed to torture you for anyone's pleasure. They are designed to teach you to stop doing what is not good for you. The patterns of material existence serve the primary purpose of creating a common denominator between cultures that once had very little capacity to connect deeply or well. By transitioning your minds and intentions, into a capitalist, materialist society. We taught you how to interact. From here, there will be a new phase. We are guiding you towards a reverence for the way in which you interact with material presence. To revere the gifts of the earth is to learn how to love being here. And as you increasingly cherish this love, you will be guided deeper into the presence and value for what matters most. This works. The art of capitalism itself is designed to transition humanity towards collaboration and cooperation as the most valued and intense and intelligent and powerful human beings increasingly wake up to realize that they would rather love than win games that damage each other and the earth. Mm, thank you. That's all I can do right now. Okay, please. That's enough. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. I've um, tried to read Toth's um, tablets and mm. follow the information uh, and understand this ancient wisdom from Atlantis. And because of the language that it's written in, which assuming it was his original language or way of expressing the tablets, I I could not understand what I was reading. <laughs> I wanted so much to it wasn't just follow what he was saying. I wanted to like to really interact with him because yeah. yeah. this is deep stuff, life changing stuff that could so, be ingested. <laughs> you know, it's it's so much to take in, and in some ways, it's a lot to ask of people because we were raised with stories that we have to rewrite, and I know that's a lot to sort of put on uh, me in this moment, but it does harmonize with the Emerald Tablets, with many other hermetic doctrines. So the basic framework, and really again and again and again, he encourages, come from this perspective before history began, before you were here. Don't think as a human trying to find the truth, put yourself off planet, looking at the planet, considering participation. Then think, Atlantis was the end of one cycle and the beginning of another. Some beings from Atlantis decided to stay and be guides through what we know as human history. That's what the Emerald Tablets are describing. For this entire time, these beings 
which were initially called by many names, were presencing culture. So there are things throughout these 13,000 years that they changed on purpose. They woke up the Greeks with the Eleusian mysteries. They woke up in, in the Enlightenment era, as it was called in Europe, and the Rosicrucians came into being. The Rosicrucians were taught by this school, by this sacred mystery school, that there, there's an art to watching something or reading a book where you can read the book, but you learn to turn it, tune into the energy beneath. You learn to link to the inspiration that wrote the book. And people are kind of obsessed with this, with the Emerald Tablets. So people, there's a thing out there, listen to it a hundred times before you claim to understand I've it. I've read that too. Yes. <laughs> and with good reason, because if you loosen your grip on the words, those words were a translation you know, themselves. And it was more suited to people in the 1900s than to now. So, you know, take a little of the pressure off yourself as if it's your fault you don't understand, but then aim for this tuning into the energy. Because when you practice by just listening to it and listening to it again, it's changing your energy. And if you learn to do this work based on the practices that we introduced earlier, where you're paying attention to your spirit. So you start to watch, how did my spirit change when I listened to that? How did it change when I listened to it again? And then you breathe with that and gradually you learn to hear them. They're, they're there. There's a whole school, mystery school, guided by Toth. And they'll, they want us to talk. Thank you. And I just want to acknowledge, thank you so much for the channeling earlier. It was really magnificent. Thank you. Because I know that took a lot out of you. So I'm actually sending you a lot of healing right now. Oh, of, it's uh, through me. So it feels awesome. I'm like buzzing. But that was definitely my limit in this moment. <laughs> and I was like, whoo. Excellent. Um, well, thank you for that. It, do you think that Thoth is closer in his presence with humanity than ever before? Absolutely. The, the veils are thinning. Tomorrow, I'm posting a channeling that explains this a little bit more, but they've been on Wildflower Fire YouTube, but they've been creating a deeper space for those of us who choose to stay on earth, for those who, of us who love the earth. They've been preparing a deeper space. And it wasn't ready 300 years ago. <laughs> they weren't being mean. It wasn't time. Time leads to this point. So many cultures have prophecies about now. And the veils are thinning. For the next 10 years, it's going to get easier and easier, but it's also going to be much more chaotic as forces get released that have been held down by the boundaries. Yes, yes. Uh, what do you mean, Daniel, when you say own your own spiritual practice? What does that mean? Uh, so the, the interaction of the chakras reveals to us an incredibly and scary interaction with the world. Basically, we are taking on other people's energy and energies from the world all the time. And it's really daunting learning that. Yeah. And a lot of the energy we take on is out of tune with a loving life, with crystalline consciousness, Christ consciousness. Our crystalline consciousness is whole. It's where all the colors harmonize in a rainbow. So much exists in the world, dense energy that's out of tune with that. And it's essentially darkness because it's out of tune with the frequencies of, of a, a full spectrum of light. So we can feel that. We feel it every day when you feel that weight in the back of your shoulders, when you, know, when you take on a burden for somebody else, we know it, that we, I have a burden on my shoulders. That means it's out of tune. The Emerald Tablets has a series of incredibly deep lessons on how to deal with that and change it and release it again. But people aren't doing this on a regular basis yet. So the base level is learn that we have the power to recognize what we're feeling early as energy and to say no, to say yes, to change it, to shift it, to own our life and stop just being yanked and pulled around by the forces that are directed at us. On the surface, it seems benevolent. You know, people are being kind to you while they talk, they're smiling, but they're really trying to avo avoid their own bullshit. And they're trying to recruit you into helping them avoid their own bullshit. At the end of the day, you leave feeling not good because you've retuned to their avoidance pattern. Mm. Happening all the time. So when we say own your own spiritual practice, wow. the guidance Whoa. that I've been given is 
it's a really basic commitment. Three times a week, every other day, commit to retuning. If you do that, you will get used to recognizing when the choices and people in your life drag you off tune. Mm. And so, and then you're going to be able to say, wait a second, that just dragged me off tune. I'm not doing that. Or just, yeah. I'm going to take charge and I'm going to say, well, if we're going to do this, it's going to last 15 minutes. No, I'm not talking for 20. No, I'm not going to da da with you. You know, own it. Beautiful. Oh my God. That's a lot. That's and I'm so grateful because you're actually building on everything you say before you build and you build and you build. So it it feels like we're creating something here. Yeah. You they, they taught me well. They taught me well. Yeah. And that it's understandable, like at, at layman's terms, which I think is important. You yeah. you wrote something, Daniel, on your YouTube channel. And I wanted to ask you what this meant because I was intrigued. I'm going to give a quote here. People are bound by communities that are woven together with sexual patterns. These patterns reflect how we are treating the earth, both our interpersonal and our mass cultural patterns of abusing the divining feminine. I think you meant divine feminine must change for healing and joy to be fully present in our lives. Can you expand on that? Um, how much time do you have? <laughs> you know, um, whenever two musicians play together, you have to decide what key you're going to be in and tune your instruments. So first you tune your instruments, then you decide what key you're playing in. If one person is trying to play in the key of G and another person's playing in B flat, it's going to sound periodically dissonant. Sexuality comes out of harmonies. So... When one presence and another are trying to interact, do they naturally harmonize? We are coming out of an atrocious time when essentially dominance patterns have defined much of our culture. And those dominance patterns are reflected in how sexual relationships progress. So essentially, the, the worst expression of this, the most common bad expression, is that men are taught to teach a woman to retune to them. So if a, if a person, man or woman, is carrying dissonance they want to get rid of, and they move in out into the world and they seek to dominate someone else, to blend with them and try to get rid of their pain for a while. This is, this is the world we've lived in. These patterns are what go on all the time. We're taught to think of it maybe as a game. Maybe it is funny. Pop culture reinforces, you know, largely women are supposed to be able to brush off aggressive overtures. In the future that we're stepping into, the very concept that you would have to say no to an aggressive overture is anathema. No fucking way. No way. It's a violation just to exist in such a form. But we're coming out of this time. And the base level that you see at the end of the day is people are fighting for dominance here and here and here and here. And at the end of the day, we're abusing downhill. Shit rolls downhill. So the top of the corporate hierarchy abuses downhill. The middlemen abuse their wives or abuse the women they try to pick up. Women do this too. It does happen, but the numbers wouldn't reflect well on the genders, I think. And at the end of the day, pollute. Nobody's got any energy left over to, to care about the pollution that we're giving to the earth. Nobody has enough energy to care. You just throw it in the, in the grass. You know, Don't tune into the fact that most of the lakes across the entire northern U.S. are poisoned with pesticides and fertilizers because we can't even begin to address that problem. So we can't go swimming anymore all across the country. You know, But we don't have leftover bandwidth because everybody's fighting for dominance. It's a lot. It is a lot. And um, in shamanism too, they have a prophecy that says every 500 years, we live in a Pachacuti. We are right in the middle of a Pachacuti now. And of the many things that will happen as this chaos starts to shift off and transmute, one of them is the rise of the divine feminine. And so um, very beautiful what you said. And it makes me think, you know, how many different ways this presents 
even something that might look benign. I have an acquaintance who was sending me uh, things on Instagram and they were political and I wasn't liking that at all. I mean, I, first of all, have very different political views than she does. And um, the most recent one was of Kamala Harris. And it was incredibly derogatory that a man was teaching her, I was supposed to be funny, through a phone call like she was a puppet. And I was aghast that another female would look at a woman of color, an indigenous woman, and a woman who is politically, I mean, I can't imagine running against this crazy political system we have that is so dysfunctional and across these very interesting men and another woman, even if you don't want to vote for her, would disenfranchise her, would not support her, would promote something somebody else put together to make fun of her. And I was actually disgusted by it. Because I think any woman who's strong enough to even get that far, you know, should be supported. I would still love to see a woman run this country for many reasons. I'd, I'd, I'd push it much harder than that. Like, this is about attunement. And maybe it's a really good place to end. Like, sometimes we have to make choices. We can't appeal to everybody. It's time for this change. Yeah. This woman is here to tear to shreds the patterns that have allowed men to compete for who's the alpha and the alpha takes. This is not bonding. This is forcing other people to retune. That's as kindly and generously as we can put it. The, the, the dark end of that is rape, 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 rape of the earth, rape of people. So when we stare at it for what it is and we say, this is a hard line. Don't care if you got a lot of money for me, this is a hard line. It's time for this change. This is why it's happening. Look at her face when she talks. She's the right person for this. And I'm so sorry for every person who's been forced to retune to a different thought process, but it's time. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wish I had sent all that back in the Instagram, but you know, yeah, it was enough for me to say, I can't do this any longer. Um, you have such a calm, beautiful nature, Daniel. I feel like even through your beingness, you're channeling because it's very felt out here. And if I'm feeling it, I'm sure the audience feels just spending time with you, how healing it is. I wanna ask you here at the end, what do you next dare to dream? This is Dare to Dream <laughs> podcast. What are your future dreams and goals? It has for a very long time been as simple as get the message of this workout. So the things that I'm, part of, put into motion, primarily the channel and the community that has developed around the channel. We're gathering some of the most incredible people from around the world. It works. We've been doing this for several years, kind of in beta. Last week, we put up an invitation on the website to join the community. So it's just started, but there are people who've been together for years. And so we're, we're sharing these practices together mm -hmm. and we're sharing it in a way where people can teach each other. I have a training that can teach people how to apply this with sessions and courses. I offer sessions for people who are deep in a corporate place or a place where they're constantly confronting dense energies. Mm. It can be valuable to do sessions with me regularly to retune. But yes. most importantly, I want to teach people how to teach each other so we can share the system. And so for folks who are interested, this is the book. Amazon, can they also get it on your website? The website links to Amazon. You know, it's it's the simplest. I Honestly, I just stay on a couple. I, I keep it simple. But my eyes suck. I can't post everywhere. So yeah, go to Amazon through, but you could go there through the website. Perfect. So it's wildflowerfire, one word, wildflowerfire.com. Thank you so much, Daniel, for coming on the show today. Thank you, Debbie. I'm I'm grateful and honored by sharing with you in this way. And I look forward to seeing and talking with you again. Absolutely. And folks, I end today's show with this quote from Teal Swan. We do not fear the unknown. We fear what we project onto the unknown. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please follow, subscribe, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support means the world, and it helps other people discover the show. Thank you so much in advance. Next week on the podcast, I'm speaking with Phil Gruber. He is one of the planet's foremost teachers of sacred geometry, light language, the indigo children, the Magdalene mysteries, advanced healing systems, and the master key. Thanks for joining us today on the show. And remember, there is a practice that can be done anywhere between five minutes and an hour if you will start to do it that will help you to attune and adjust your life and the world.